one of the biggest things that's been that I did a, a video on against about the the lost labyrinth of Egypt. Did you? Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so the labyrinth is for people that haven't heard of the labyrinth. It it was one of the ancient wonders of the world. Like this was described by Herodotus and Pliny the Elder and Strabo and 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 all these historical figures that saw it, and and Herodotus described it as 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 you know. Um, exceeding in splendor and wonder that of the pyramids like this this was a tremendous the labyrinth was this sort of thousand room structure that was supposedly just absolutely magnificent you could have fit all of the temples of Karnak and Luxor and all of the temples of Egypt into its footprint uh, it was underground it had multiple levels there's all these historical accounts of people visiting it and just being awed like massive granite blocks and structures and temples it's this huge thing that was just lost to the sands of time right it just disappeared at some point after you know, the early Romans sort of written, wrote about it and the Greeks, it just somehow disappeared into the sands of time. Now, it, we've never known where it is or what it is. And it would be like a like a pyramid. It would rival the Great Pyramid for sure if, if we uh, were to find it. But it turns out we found it. And uh, Petrie actually thought he found it, thought he, thought he found the – he found some blocks. Is it's at a site called Hawara in in Egypt. Uh, it's mm -hmm. over near uh, the Fayum region, and Petrie was digging around. And a lot of people have, been, have speculated it might have been in this area. Petrie dug around, found these massive granite blocks. Thought, oh, I'm standing on the foundation for it, the bottom level. Like it's, it's all been quarried and taken away, and this must be the foundation for it. Turns out he was standing on its roof. So it, it's it's and then and then uh, he, it wasn't really looked at again after that for a while. But a guy named Louis de Cordier did something called the Matahar Expedition. I think it was 2008. Uh, he went in and he had partnership with the uh, Egyptian Department of Antiquities for this study. And they went and did ground penetrating radar and these other acoustic tests and a whole bunch of different tests at Hawara. And they found it. They found, you can, you can, they found the labyrinth. It was spread out across like multiple football fields on all sides of this pyramid and on all sides of this canal. Thing is absolutely massive. They found all this granite and, and these labyrinthine-like structures under the ground. And unfortunately, his entire report and the, all of the public information about this was suppressed. Was uh, you know, It was literally, and, and the Louis de Cordier said it was Zahi who was suppressed it under threat of national security sanction, meaning that he would ban anyone that, that, that violated this suppression from ever coming to Egypt again, and it was buried. Who was the guy who suppressed it? Zahi Huas. Who he was, was he? He was the Egyptian uh, minister of the. He was in charge of the Supreme Council of Antiquities. Okay. He's a politician. Well, he's yeah, he's the famous Egyptologist. He's the okay. He's written a bunch of books. And the Indiana Jones. High Indiana guy. Jones. High okay. Guy. Yep. So, but he and this is and this is not me saying this is Louis de Cordier, the guy who who funded and directed it along with Ghent University of Belgium did this whole experiment. Uh, did this report called the Matahar Expedition. Uh, if you go and search on the, on archive.org, you can probably still find some of it. I've got the paper from it. It was disappeared from the web. Uh, he waited a bunch of years and then eventually came out and sort of talked about it, but there wasn't any press about it. So, and it's unfortunate is because the the labyrinth is like one of the lost wonders of the ancient world. Like it's sitting right there, and unfortunately, it's rotting away in like salty groundwater because that's one of the challenges I think. And I think this is where I say it's not. I don't know if it was. I think it's mostly being suppressed and was buried because of probably political reasons more than anything because it has to do with the damming of the Nile River like so when Egypt dammed the Nile in the 1960s they put up what's called the Aswan Dam and that stopped that inundation of the Nile so every year the Nile would flood and it would spread its you know it would flood and then it would retreat and it would flood mm -hmm. and that's how they did a lot of the irrigation when they dammed the Nile everything north of that ceased that inundation stopped now you'd think that that would lower the water table but it actually has the opposite effect because the nile wouldn't shrink down in summer it there's been a consistent flow of water into there it's actually raised the water table so in the last sort of couple hundred years the water table in these regions has come up significantly including at giza places like that that mm -hmm. the level of water has come up so today the water table at hawara is at about five meters and the labyrinth starts at about nine meters oh, underground shit. so and and in order to fix that and to excavate and do stuff, you're talking like it's probably billions of dollars of of infrastructure required to even fix the drainage on the site. And it also sits at the neck, the entry into the Fayum region, which is a large depression that's used for a lot of agriculture in Egypt. And they'd have to probably start messing with like farmers' water and and it would be a huge political problem 
A, if a, it, it'd be a problem for Egypt if the whole world knew that up oh, that the labyrinth is being left to kind of rot in the ground here, right? Which is like a historical wonder that sort of belongs to everyone, and and then B, it would be an issue to try and mess with the the water rights flowing into this really farming important farming area that's used for a lot of the agriculture of Egypt. Uh, so I think for lo- those reasons, perhaps it, that oh, I don't know it, that may be part of the reason that it was suppressed, but. Suppressed, it was. I mean, mm. I think that's undeniable. But so, people that are interested can. I've got a video on the topic on my channel, and then you can also probably go and find the paper. But it's like I would, I would think that if they went public, and you would probably raise the funds through all of the universities and the and the institutes that would be interested in uncovering that and doing research on it enough such that you could probably get that, make that happen because yeah. it's 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 like the it could be the biggest discovery of the century, if not longer. If they found, if they really uncovered and, and looked at the at the labyrinth, which appears to still be there, um, what do you, what was it used for? Do you think? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's. I think it's. It was potentially like a. It could be a, a, a vastly ancient structure that was used by the Egyptians for sure. The priesthood and they they worshipped the crocodile god in there, and there's a lot of that said that that they had many many halls and temples dedicated to all the pantheon of the gods. So it might have been a a reused temple. I think that was. That happened in a lot of places in Egypt. They they places like the Assyrian at Abydos, um, Temple of Seti the First. They reused and repurposed this stuff when they found it, and it got integrated into their culture over time. I suspect the labyrinth may fit that mold as well. Um, so that's that's what it was. Yeah, I don't know. So th- 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 it's an interesting question though. Yeah. When you talk about the functionality of some of these things because this gets back to things like the statues, right? So. It, as much as I think there was a functional purpose to the boxes and and those underground spaces and some of the sites themselves with the channeling and the U blocks, it's hard to argue that the statues had a functional purpose. Like right. those those are representational for sure and ceremonial, but they also display a lot of the same precision elements, right? right. That the faces are perfectly symmetrical, which mm-hmm. is incredibly difficult. The head jets are these. The crowns on some of these structures are these 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 figures uh, have um, you know compound curved surfaces that are also perfectly symmetrical. Very difficult to uh, you, you almost need computer guided stuff to to make that happen. And I so I get the question occasionally. It's like, well, hang on, if the Egyptians and dynastic Egyptians didn't make the statues, and and you think they're older, is this the builder culture? And I, I'd my answer to that is yes. I think what we're looking at with these precision statues, and in particular the giant ones. But I think this also applies to things like Khafre enthroned and a few of the smaller statues. I think these are inherited. And I think we're looking at the remnants of how that builder culture that the Egyptians' ancestors represented themselves. And I think- Oh yeah, that shows the, sym- the symmetry this of the is the, This is part of the symmetry. Yeah, this is like sort of an example for machining of the same curve curvature being used on the face. There's another image that shows you a reverse transparency uh, of this same head, where it's it's basically you take a photo mm-hmm. and you mirror flip it on the uh, on the vertical, and then you make them both fifty percent transparent and lay them over each other. And they're identical, and it's identical. Yeah, yeah, identical. Like you don't. It, this is not. It's neither a characteristic of a human face, nor is it something that's achievable with just carving into granite by hand. Uh, when there's zero mistakes, and by and remember that there's lots of these. <laughs>